Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is Ove Gilberto. Uh, thank you for following my channel. Today I come to you with a series of lessons that is going to take about three weeks. I'm going to teach you about the diminished chord or triad, most especially playing it in kind of melodic or scale in its arpeggios in one octave, two octaves, and using the idea of um, perfect fourth. Now, before I do anything, I want to thank my dear friend. Today, this video is from my friend's studio, Kato Levindo and the family. Mr. Kato, say hi to people. Hello, hello. Thank you. So, uh, thank you for your great work. It's not easy to be behind the cameras. And I thank you for a big offer that you have given me. Okay, so uh, pick up your bass and we get started. So today is episode one or part one of this lesson. And we are going to learn about diminished chords. That's kind of diminished. So number one is just a diminished chord. So the, in, I wrote it to you like C diminished. What is it? So C diminished is just a root, flat three and flat five. That's all that a diminished triad. Root flat three, flat five. So if I'm in the key of C, this is it. So I'm playing C, flat three of C is E flat, then flat five of C is G flat, then back to the C octave. Love the sound of the meaning. That's it. So let's look at it in one octave and in two octaves, and then we'll look at the issue of perfect fourth, and that's all. So I hope you're ready with your bass already. So we're in the third fret, and this is C. First octave of a C diminished chord is C, I mean not uh, okay triad, but we think of it in a page here, okay? First, oct first root position, that's what I mean, root position and then two octaves. So this is C, flat three is E flat, flat five is G flat, and then C, you're done. Anywhere, C, E flat, G flat, and then C. If you can't understand your fret, but well, use your ears. Anywhere. 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 You know? That's all about C. One octave. Let's think of it. One octave, but it's kind of root position there. And then let's take it to two octaves now. So that will be C, E flat, to, to G flat, then to the higher C, 10th fret. So playing it in kind of a symmetry, making it, I mean, legato kind of connecting. One more time. That's two octaves. Taking it slow. Two octaves. And it's really fun, you see. So in this, you have to practice using uh, your metronome. Uh, put it as slow as possible, around 50, and go increasing slowly, slowly. Don't play too fast, play too slow. The more you can play too slow, I'm sure it's the more you can play too fast. 
So I don't mean only practice slow, but keep practicing slow things. They make sense in the actual sense of playing fast. So that's it. Then you move to the tenth fret C, E flat, G flat. Then the seventeenth fret. That's why you find another C high. That's it. So now let's have the develop the practice exercise here. What are you supposed to practice? Using perfect fourth. So that means I can play it one octave or two octaves. Let's start with one octave. It's starting with C. Then I ask myself, where is the fourth of C? Is F. Anyway, I want it. I can come here. You see? The fourth of F is B flat. The fourth of B flat is E flat. Fourth of E flat is A flat. And then fourth of A flat is a D flat. D flat is G flat. G flat is B. B is E. E is A. A goes back to D. G goes to D goes to G. Then G goes back to C. So that kind of practice. So for example, when you practice like with two octaves, you want to use perfect foot, and even in D, in C, you can decide to use one string or Go to F, you know, like that. You can keep changing. I mean, I'm using one string is mostly important for understanding the fretboard, but you can change. So if it is uh, like two octaves that, yeah. some notes which were short they're not right so after that I know it goes to F so I go and I know after F it goes to B flat sorry for that Unlike on like that. So this exercise is very, very important for you. Ear training, positioning of the frets, knowing everything, and you can use this kind of idea in your solos. So thank you very much. Hope this lesson has been helpful to you. See you again next week in lesson two, episode two of this. Don't miss, stay tuned, and we shall be doing the C minor seven flat five, or what we call the half diminished chord by classical people. Bye-bye.